Hello and welcome everyone to Purple Shirt History. In today's video, we'll look at the Cambridge IGCSE 0470 syllabus. This is a bit of a longer video because we're going to take an in-depth look at the papers, how much time you get, all the components, and the different content that you'll need to know to score highly in the examination. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. With that being said, let's take a look at the in-depth view of the syllabus. So this is the overview for the Cambridge IGCSE History 0470 syllabus, used for the exams 2024, 2025, and 2026. Exams are available in June and November, so that's the summer and winter exams. And in India, they are available in March as well. This page just goes over the um, kind of reasons to take the Cambridge International exams. I'll let you read this. You could pause it on your own. But the key thing, I think, is just the bottom there. It says 10,000 schools, 160 countries. So it gives you an idea of the scope of how big um, these tests are worldwide increasingly being used in the U.S. too. I had a colleague in Florida who taught at a school which did the Cambridge International Exams. So going to the syllabus overview, we see the aims, content overview, assessment overview, and assessment objectives. If you see, if you, if you hover over them, you'll see go to page whatever, and you can click on that and it'll take you automatically to that page. Looking at the subject content, option A and option B, we'll focus on option B and we'll go over a number of depth studies, uh, Russia, Germany, and talk about a few others that are available. Down to the details of the assessment, we see the paper one, the structured questions. So this is a big part of the exam, 40% uh, of it, as, as we'll see when we go over having to answer an A, a B, and a C part to each of these questions. So we'll talk about those. And the paper two, which is the source analysis document question. So there's many different types of questions that can be asked here for visual sources and written sources. Component three, I won't get into too much. Um, that'll be a separate video on coursework. Uh, coursework or the paper for the alternative to coursework uh, can be taken and this is a about 27 percent of the overall grade and we'll we'll touch upon these things paper four is new there's been a big change it's not new in terms of it, that it's been created but it's been altered significantly into two questions we'll go over command words so what are they exactly looking for so you want to be able to answer the question exactly to get the highest marks what else do you need to know? I'll have a link to the syllabus in the description so you can read it in its entirety. I won't go every go through every bit of it, so you can take a look at a more leisurely pace on your own. Key age groups 14 to 16. So I have had students younger than 14 and 13 year olds, and I believe I've had a a few 17 year olds take this test, but that's the primary age group. So that's what we're looking at. So most students watching this video should be between 14 and 16 to help them out with their IGCSE history. Taking a look at this, last sentence here is very key. So diversity of perspectives, including social, economic, cultural, and political. These are the major themes that we look at. So we're trying to see things from both sides, see how things impact each other, how politics influences economics, economics influences politics, and so on. Candidates who achieve grades A star to C, these are the, the passing grades. Uh, look forward to going on to AS and A-level history. I've had plenty of students just take IGCSE history uh, and not go on to A-level, as, you know, as well as a lot that have gone on to A-level. It's an elective where I'm teaching currently, but I think everyone should, I'm biased of course, but everyone should take history. And as we see, 
a little feedback from a teacher, a manager, managing director of a school in Egypt that just, again, shows you the worldwide scope of this. Uh, for any teachers watching this video, I highly recommend the the face-to-face -face trainings now that uh, COVID is over. It's uh, nice to go to these events so you can look on the website where they're being held. Um, there's online trainings, but I really believe you get a lot more out of the live trainings. You get to meet your colleagues, make some connections, get resources, uh, have a, a nice kind of environment to, to develop professionally. So uh, in terms of the aims, you can look at all these bullet points, and I'm just going to highlight one, the key historical concepts, cause and consequence, change in continuity, similarity, and difference. So these are the things that the students need to know how to do, the causation, what changes, what stays the same, and how are things different. Again, I teach the option B, but I do recommend knowing the, the option A. If you have time to study it uh, in your free time, yeah, it's, it's great to, to know these things. But for us, we're going to focus on international relations since 1919. And these are the key questions, the Treaty of Versailles, post-World War I, League of Nations, the steps to World War II, the outbreak of the Cold War, uh, the effectiveness of the United States in stopping the spread of communism, and the uh, USSR's control over Eastern Europe for 1948 to 1989. So these, these are the key questions that each, each one of these key questions will get videos. So right now I'm doing the Germany depth study. So the Weimar government to Nazi Germany uh, but I've really done the, the Russian depth study more, so there's lots of things to, to do for those two. And I wanted to highlight the, the last one, E, the Second World War in Europe and the Asia Pacific. This is a new depth study. So uh, World War II is quite popular with the kids. It's very dramatic, so uh, there's a new depth study for it. I mean, there's no, it hasn't been marked yet. There's no past papers for it yet or anything like that, so... Uh, I'm interested to see how that will turn out. Uh, paper one. So again, this is two hours. It is 40% of the grade. So it is an A, a B, and a C question. A is worth four marks. B is worth six marks. And C is worth 10 marks. You have to answer three of these. So two will be from the core content, that 20th century history. One will be from the depth study, whether you choose to do Russia, Germany, World War I, whatever. So do not make the mistake of answering three questions from the core content. That is a huge mistake to make. You're dropping 20 marks automatically. So please, if you're about to take the test, remember, tell yourself two and one. You have to answer a depth study question, a depth study ABC question. Going on to the paper two, it is an hour and 45 minutes, slightly less time than you'll get for the paper one. This is the source analysis paper. So you'll get a number of questions and a, a number of sources. Some will be written sources, some will be cartoons. And one question at the end will kind of sum up all the previous questions that were asked. It's worth 30% of your grade and it's very important to take a look at the last bullet point in paper two, the prescribed topics change in each exam series. So that one question and one prescribed topic, do not just download any syllabus from the past. Um, you need to make sure that you are taking the syllabus for the test, that your, test year that you're going to take, and then you'll make sure you'll get the right topic and be able to do a work concerning that particular topic. So yeah, make a, a note to yourself, make sure that you're studying the, the proper topic, you have the right syllabus. So those two are mandatory. And depending on what your teacher does or what your school does, you'll either do coursework, which is the component three, or paper four. So I said 27% before, so about 27%, 30%. So. Um, the coursework, yeah, that, like I said, that will be an entirely different video. 
it is a long process. You'll have a semester or more than a semester to write a long paragraph of 2000 words. Whereas the paper four, this is new in terms that it used to be just one 40 mark question, which was quite difficult. Uh, but now it's been split into two parts, a uh, 15 and a 25 mark question. So that's the big change recently in terms of the IGCSE exam. Here are the assessment objectives, A1, A2, and A3. An ability to recall, select, organize, and deploy knowledge of the syllabus content. A2 are these skills that we talked about. So if there's a, if A happens, how did it cause B, right? Uh, did A stay the same or change? Is it different? And A3, the ability to understand, interpret, evaluate, and use a range of sources in their historical context. So these are the assessment objectives. Here are how they're weighted. You'll see A2 has the highest weighting. So knowing those skills is incredibly important. And the assessment objectives. So you see how it all adds up there between the paper one, paper two, and the component three or paper four. All right, on to the subject content. So within the syllabus, you'll see the key themes, the key questions, and then underneath those key questions, there's going to be, you know, subunits. So things that need to be answered in order to get the overarching question. So I'm just gonna go through these quickly. Like I said, Italian unification, German unification. This is all fascinating stuff. Civil war in the US for those taking the American option. Imperialism, alliance, uh, First World War, and yeah, all that is very fascinating stuff. But we're going to go on to the option B. Again, here are all the six key questions. And if you look underneath there, going on to the first one was the Treaty of Versailles Fair, you start to see the focus points. So just to recap, I'll highlight all these. And then looking down, what were the motives and aims of the big three at Versailles? And there's some other questions that go towards those key questions. Scrolling down. Again, you can follow along with the syllabus, the PDF, if you have a, uh, access to a printer, I'd suggest printing it out, highlighting it, underlining it, really making sure that you get all the information. I think one of the biggest mistakes you can make is not reading the syllabus very carefully. So that this is uh, the most important document because it tells you exactly what you need to do. So the next one, League of Nations, steps to World War II. There's a lot of free space on the right there. so I have my kids write notes as well, talking about those bullet points there. Chapter four, who was to blame for the Cold War. That's the second unit. The first unit is chapters one, two, three. Unit two is four, five, six. Uh, USA in containment. So the case studies there, you can see the Korean War, Cuba, and Vietnam. And then the last chapter here, how secure was the USSR's control over Europe, Eastern Europe. And there's a number of case studies there. You can see specified content, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Berlin Wall, Solidarity in Poland, and Gorbachev. All right, on to the depth studies. So we see here again, just to reiterate what they are, the new one is, is E, letter E. US, Russia, Germany, and the First World War. So these depth studies can be found at the back of the Ben Walsh book, but I'm gonna have a video going over some other books that I find very useful. So the John Cantrell book, uh, Access to History books, um, Seminar Studies books, there's a lot of different really good ones that will help to improve your content knowledge. So just scrolling through here, you can see the depth study. There's a lot more bullet points because 
Obviously, it goes in depth and it goes into more detail. Here's the Germany one that I'm doing now, Weimar government, post-World War I government in Germany. So looking at all these focus points, you know, 20s, then to the 30s, then to the Nazi regime, into World War II and the war itself. So looking at all these different sub points. Yeah, like I said, this is nice to print out because you can, as you're reading your textbook or as you're reading any supplemental material, you can just make notes in your notebook and notes in the syllabus saying, oh, I know what this is all about. Also, uh, I'm gonna do a video on the learner's guide. So uh, be on the lookout for that. There's gonna be actual interactive buttons you can press to make um, either a green, amber, or red. So if you feel very comfortable with the topic, you can click on green, like a, like a traffic light. If you feel like you're not 100% comfortable with it, you would be amber. And if you feel very uncomfortable, if you feel like you don't know much about it, uh, you would click red. And that would mean you would have to go back and, and study that again. So again, just trying to give you an idea of the different focus points questions that are being asked for those taking the American depth study. There's overlap between these depth studies as well from the 20s and 30s. So you can see that, oh, this knowledge is in the core content. I can put it in my depth study, but I'll have to add a little bit more. And this new one. So I'm actually looking at this for the first time. To what extent a Nazi Germany gained control of Europe in 1940? All right. Battle of Stalingrad. Yeah, these are all new. This is a new depth study. So this is nice to see that this refresh has some interesting questions, overarching questions and specific content. Because in the core content, World War II is, is completely skipped over. As you saw before, it goes from steps to World War II to the Cold War and the war itself, uh, Battle of Midway, I see there. So all that stuff is, it's skipped. So this is bringing a kind of continuity through the whole 20th century. So the details, again, of the assessment, the paper one, just to recap, it is compulsory. You can't skip this. And again, that, I can't stress this enough. I've had, students answer the three questions from just the core content and, and drop those 20 marks. I've heard these stories. So uh, it is absolutely vital that you do the two from the core content and one from the depth study. The document question, again, so this changes every year. Let's take a look going down it'll tell us for the upcoming years from when this video was recorded what the topics are so looking at our option b 2024 the option uh, the thought topic will be how secure was the ussr's control over eastern europe for india in march how effectively did the us contain the spread of communism for the summer exam and who is to blame for the Cold War for the November exam? Okay, so that's 2024. Here's 2025. Again, League of Nations, League of Nations, and then the chapter three uh, for, the, for the winter exam. Hitler's foreign policy steps to World War II. And then 2026, you can see again, here they are, India, would be the spread of communism, uh, chapter five, how the U.S. control it. The summer exam is uh, chapter one, the Treaty of Versailles, and the winter exam is containing the spread of communism. Coursework, there is a coursework handbook that I would recommend downloading as well. I could link that in the description. So worth checking out. It'll give you all the details for that. And then this paper four alternative to coursework, an hour and 40 minutes. 
again, optional depending on what your teacher has you doing, what the school has you doing. The grade boundaries for the old paper four were um, quite low in, in my opinion. So it was a 40 mark question. And if you don't know what grade boundaries are, I'll do a video on that, but it was around 20 marks. You needed, you only needed to get a 50% 20 marks to get an A. So I'll explain how that works at a later date, but yeah, the, the marking would, we'll get into as for the coursework. Yes. With AI and chat GPT and all this kind of stuff really on the lookout for plagiarism. So, um, the policies in there, make sure your work is original. Here is the generic mark scheme for coursework, right? So this is what you need to do in order to fall in those bands. So to get the top marks, uh, you need to fulfill those criteria and those bullet points. Top marks would be 36 to a 40. Coursework, you only get one shot at it. You can't re resubmit. So that's something to take into consideration if you're thinking of choosing the paper four or the coursework, the paper four can resit the exam. We'll get into resits and remarks and all that stuff in another video. So kind of getting towards the end here, the command words, make sure that you underline the keywords of the question. So describe, discuss, explain. So do this in a structured way. You should systematically look at the question and answer it in an organized way. And that's how you will score high on these types of questions. What else do you need to know? You can look at these, these things here. You do not need to study any history before IGCSE. So please don't feel intimidated that if you haven't studied history before, Cambridge recommends 130 guided learning hours for each subject, right? So over the course of the school year, you should have about 130 hours to learn all of this stuff. And here are the other history courses, but we're focusing here on 0470. Some other notices towards the ends. Grading and reporting. Normally you'll get your results if you take the summer exam around mid August. So these are the grades, like we said, a star is the highest possible grade. You can get awards uh, like best in country, best in the world. If you're really a top student, it's, it's possible. I've had students achieve best in country. And the full name for IGCSE, if you were unaware, is International General Certificate of Secondary Education. So that's what that acronym stands for. Here are the changes. Like I said, if you're brand new to IGCSE history, then yeah, this is what, what you'll be used to. It's, this has been a big refresh here. So I'm glad to be making this video to kind of uh, show and explain the, the new things for, for people that have maybe been teaching this for a while um, and used to the old way. And also for the new students, new teachers to kind of see how it's going forward for the next three years. So thank you very much for watching this syllabus overview. And I hope to see you in the next one.